Hello friends and I welcome you back to my uh, channel. If you are a first time viewer here, then I would highly recommend that you please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon because I make interesting videos on uh, endodontics, rubber and composites and uh, other subjects. Well friends, uh, today I am going to speak on a very important aspect and you know one of the fear that all uh, everyone has that uh, why is there post-operative sensitivity after composite restoration uh, well friends i have already made a small video on the same it is actually a technique video but uh, in this video i'm going to explain it more in detail the link for the technique video is there on uh, top of your screen you can definitely go back and uh, view the same after you have seen this video so let's jump into our subject and let's understand why is there post-operative sensitivity after composite restoration. Uh, so friends, uh, we all are aware that, you know, dentine is a complex structure and there are dentinal tubules, you know, uh, through which dentinal fluid is uh, pumping uh, out and in. Uh, so let's take an example here. Uh, in front of your screen, you can see a microscopic image of the dentinal surface. And you can see the tiny openings of the dentine, which are actually dentine tubules. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's imagine that I do a composite restoration here, but accidentally I uh, leave an air void behind. Okay. Uh, so now what happens here is that the patient goes back. He starts eating, you know, food. He starts eating, uh, eating hot, cold, sweet, etc. And the uh, moment he starts eating these kind of uh, foods, there uh, the tiny chamber or the tiny void that has been left behind it is nothing but a vacuum chamber so uh, the there is going to be some amount of pressure changes that will be present in this tiny vacuum chamber now due to uh, eating of different foods that is hot cold and sweets uh, due to the pressure changes happening in this tiny void the dentinal fluid actually moves in these dentinal tubules and therefore the patient perceives post operative pain on the contrary before placing uh, my composite increment on the tooth surface in case if i seal these dentine first then even if i leave an air void behind the patient is not going to experience pain because the dentine tubules are already sealed okay so no so even if there is a tiny vacuum chamber remaining behind the movement of dentine fluids does not happen because there is no pressure changes happening because the opening of the dentine tubules are already seen okay so to give you a small percept, uh, perspective of the same you can you actually see the image on the left hand side of your screen where a composite filling has been done and there is a tiny air void left behind this is again a pressure chamber and it is going to cause some kind of uh, you know a post operative pain on the contrary the image on the right hand side when the dentine tubules are sealed okay there is not going to be any pressure change happening and patient is not going to perceive pain. Well, friends, this is nothing but immediate dentine sealing. So this is a technique that was introduced by uh, the master in our restorative field that is Pascal Mane. He gave this classic article in 2005. This article is free to download uh, on uh, the internet. I would highly recommend that you go ahead and you read this particular article. Well, uh, to explain you more in detail in his classic article, Pascal Mane recommends that uh, the OptiBond FL, the filled bonding agent or filled adhesive from Kerr has to be precisely applied on the dentana tables with a periodontal probe or any sharp instrument. Okay, so as the name says, it is immediate dentine sealing. It is not immediate enamel sealing. We need to precisely apply uh, the filled adhesive OptiBond FL on the dentine only. Okay, now um since optibond fl is not available in my my country here in india so you know uh, uh during the covid times when uh, i was actually you know i had attended many webinars by pascal many uh, of them you know were asking the question that if optibond fl is not available in my country what should i use okay so an explanation to this was again published by a classic article in 2021 by Marco and, and Pascal together in which they said that whatever bonding agent we are using or whatever adhesive we are using in our country, that same bonding agent has to be used. It has to be light cured, but the same bonding agent has to be topped with a flowable resin coating. So 
to bring all of this into perspective let's understand this with a clinical case so we have a case here where a restorative treatment has to be done and this is how the cavity looks after the preparation just don't uh, bring into your mind that whether we are doing a direct or indirect uh, restoration in this particular case what is important for me to understand that once all the dk and caries has been removed first important step is to identify the dentangle surface yes friends so it is important that whenever i am doing immediate dentin sealing or ids i should know where is my dental so your uh, the role of magnification is very important so you can definitely you know do the same with loops or or microscope is the best now once you know that okay these are this is my dentinal surface my phase 2 starts okay now in phase 2 i would like to divide this into two parts okay whether i am doing a direct composite restoration or whether it is my indirect restoration so it can be composite or it can be ceramic also okay so now first and foremost let's discuss about the direct thing okay so now when it comes to etching okay for a direct composite restoration we are always following the selective etch technique where we are placing the etchant first on the enamel and we wait for 20 seconds for the enamel to get etched now after 20 seconds have been lapsed we now flood the dentinal surface with the etchant and we wait for more 20 seconds uh, to get completed and both of these etchants which have been placed on enamel and dentin are washed together so this is about a selective etch technique that we do for a direct composite restoration well when it comes to indirect restorations then we are going to only etch the dentinal surface for 20 seconds okay friends please note that at this particular stage when you are doing indirect restorations do not etch the enamel because etching of the enamel is going to come later during the bonding appointment so at this stage we are only doing immediate dentin sealing for which i am going to etch only the dentin for 20 seconds once uh, the etchant has been thoroughly washed it is effectively air dried we now come to the adhesive application now again i have simplified this into two parts direct and indirect okay now when it comes to my direct composite restoration i am going to place my adhesive on the enamel and dentin together okay so now whatever adhesive that is available in india whatever bonding agent i am in my country i am going to place it on the enamel and dentin both and i am going to apply it and light cure it according to the manufacturer's recommendation now as per recommendation by pascal mane and marco in from the classic article in 2021 they highly recommend that whatever bonding agent was applied on the dentin to improve its bond strength and to seal the dentin effectively we are going to give a small layer or small coating of flowable composite on dentin only now friends here it is important that you place this flowable coating only on dentin okay don't place it on enamel and uh, once this has been completed then i move on to my composite placement uh, by whatever technique you can be doing well now friends for the indirect restoration the story is slightly different now here i would be placing my bonding agent only on the dentin okay i am not placing the bonding agent on enamel here because till now we have not taken any impression or scan of the indirect restoration so i am so to seal my dentina tubes effectively i am going to place the bonding agent or adhesively only on the dentinal surface and as marco and pascal have recommended from the classic article in 2021 whatever bonding agent i am going to use i am going to give a small thin layer or you can say a liner of flowable composite over that so this completes the immediate dentin sealing for my indirect restoration so to give you a perspective of the same this is how it looks after the immediate dentin sealing has been done okay so the dentinal surface now looks slightly opaque and you cannot see the underlying dentin so believe me friends once this has been done patient is not going to perceive any post operative pain 
and uh, it is important uh, then that we focus on more complex things like you know uh, you know sculpting the anatomy and uh, creating tight contact or you know giving good texture to the anterior composite restorations and the other factors which are more critical okay so now friends coming to the last part of our video that what do we do once this immediate dentine sealing has been completed so once my immediate dentine sealing has been completed uh, we have two options so for my direct composite restorations i am going to proceed with my layering step where i would be you know building now the rest of the walls the contact the grooves the fissures and the building of the anatomy etc well for my indirect restorations what i would be doing next is removal of the oxygen inhibition layer followed by impression taking and then the scan okay so now here it is important that uh, again the flowable composite and our adhesive again they are uh, they 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 have monomer in that so once we have light cured it uh, there is going to be some amount of oxygen inhibition layer so before i do my impression taking or scanning i need to remove this okay otherwise uh, my my impression material is going to stick to this oxygen inhibition layer well friends i already have an excellent video on the same uh, the link of which is there on top of your screen you can definitely go ahead and see it later so uh, friends this brings us to the end of our video and i hope you have understood this uh, please feel free to comment and in case if there are questions you can feel free to connect with me and please do share with this uh, share this video with your friends and and others thank you and see you again in the next video